Jaya ja, Shri Radhe Shyam. Welcome to Sarva Shakti, Life of Love, the biography of Sri Radha Raman Charandas Deva, the embodiment of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's universal religion of love, by Dr. Obiel Kapoor, Chapter 1, The Child, the pretty picturesque little village of Mahish Kola stands on the Chitra in the Narhai subdivision of the district of Jisor in Bengal. There, nature bestowed her beauties and bounties which, with a lavish hand, and the people are in merry band of seraphs and cherubs on the place beneath. The scenery is a beautiful as the crops are plentiful in the harvest seasons of the year. The azure sky, the grassy green, the golden fields, the verdant woods, the tree bend under the weight of their fruits. The trees bend under the weight of their fruits. The soft, delicious air perfumed with the scent of flowers, the rustling leaves, the murmuring brook, the lowing herb, herds. The cooing birds all combine to make a heaven of this blessed land on earth. Privation and want is unknown for many miles around. Peace and happiness reign everywhere. Fortune smiles on the villagers, and they all appear with a healthy glow on their cheeks and a ready smile on their lips. At the time of which we are speaking, the majority of the inhabitants of Mahish Kola were Kajasthas by caste, and the Goshes were the richest and the most influential of them all. They were the landlords of the village, and Mohan Chandra was the ruling Semindar of the place. This Mohan Chandra was the father of in the flesh of the hero of our work. He was his third son by his second wife, Kanaka Sundari by name. Birth. It was a cloudy night in the month of April 1853, and the rains came down when Kanaka Sundari lay in a labor in the lying in room beneath the betel nut tree on the adjoining yard. The storm came on, the winds began to howl, there was a heavy downpour, trees were unprotected, and the broken boats were swimming in the streams on the beaten paths of the village. The darts and flashes of lightning were coming and going, and the crash and roll of thunders were heard from time to time. All nature was austere, convulsed with pain, and it were passing through the throes of childbirth, so to speak, sympathizing with the labor pain of the mother in the lying room. The betel nut tree was struck with lightning and instantly reduced to ashes. But strange to say, not the slightest damage was done to the room and the inmates of the room. Providence saved them all, and nature meant it as a sign to show that she brushed off all the evil influences at work in the sacred hour of the advent of the blessed newcomer. The night was passing away, and it was in the rosy hours of the dawn that the child was born, the child that was a dispel, the accumulate darkness of ages in the world, and bring in the sunshine of divine light and love for the suffering multitude of men. The baby will not suck, will not suck. So the baby came to see the light of the world, but oh, that it would not suck. What a pity! What is to be done? How could it be made to live if it will not suck? But no, it will not suck. The mother tried to make it suck. And so did the, the midwife and all the matrons of the neighborhood. But no to no purpose. The baby will not suck of the mother breast. It was too much for the earth, for this newcomer from the kingdom of God. Three days passed. And the baby went without the mother's milk. On the third day, they tried to make him drink some milk. There was much cry but little wool. One will say, for little wool eat drink. 
three days more. Sixth day in all, the little baby going without any milk. They despair of its life. The Ojas and Kavirajs were called, called in, but they could not do nothing. On the sixth day, however, one Rajani Kanta Vatacharya, a neighbor who was sometimes of some time of a devotee, came and advised them to offer worship to the Lord and give him prashad to drink, and then he will drink. For the baby was a devotee and will not take anything but what had been offered up to the Lord. It was done. The Lord was worshipped and lo, the offered milk was readily taken by the newborn baby and it began to suck of the mother's breast after it was bathed in the Sharanamrita. The spiritualized water from the from of the feet of God in the form of his image worshipped with the spirit of love and devo devotion. Prashat and Sharanamrita, the spiritualization of food and water, matter and spirit, these are the two great principles of all being. Matter is that which presents itself to our senses and is readily perceived by men that live entirely in the world of senses. Spirit is something beyond this range of sensuous perception and, as such, it is beyond the kind of matter of fact, people of the world. But there is the spirit, the spirit of God, immanent in the world and beyond. Everything is potentially divine, and so is a man who is born to manifest this divinity with him. He can do this with the gracious help of the name of the Lord, which is inseparable, associated with the Lord himself. Yes, yes. The sadaka can, the trained man of purified soul and light and love. He can manifest the divinity wherever he will. He can manifest the spirit of the Lord in the food and drink and holy water consecrated to his Lord. He spiritualizes the whole thing for nothing but the spirit is acceptable to him. The vigraha, he looks upon is the spirit and not the material image as it is vainly supposed to be. The food he takes is no longer the vegetable always sold in the marketplace, but it is the spirit food for the nourishment of his spiritual being. The water he drinks is not the common water of the fountain, but the spirit water for quenching the thirsts of his thirsty soul. The men who come into contact with him are not common flesh and blood they were before, but they transfixed, transfigured, and transformed into the consistence of a spiritual being. The land he tra traverses is no longer the rocky soil of earthy composition, but the hallowed land divine, the kingdom of God on earth below. This is a truth, no mystery, and we come to know it by and by in the natural course of our spiritual development in life, the horoscope. I want to stop in this moment, just for 10 seconds, to invite you to subscribe to this channel. I am pretty sure that all what I am loading, uploading here will be of your interest. If you are interested on the Gaudiya Vaishnavism, Siddhanta, philosophy, and the real philosophy of Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu, along with the philosophy and the teachings of Sri Radha Raman Charandas Deva Parivar, then you will be very happy to be here. Subscribe now, give like and share on your social media. More sadakas, devotees and researchers will find out all this beautiful tattva. The horoscope. So the baby grew, mewling and poking in the mother's arms. The astrologer came and made the horoscope. He said he was glad to find Vihaspati controlling the destiny in the hour of birth. This child showed that the baby was not a common child. He fate fair to be the, a great man in afterlife. In the seventh month after birth, the Anaprasana ceremony was held when the baby was giving solid food to it for the first time in its life. It was the custom at this time to hold a plate before the child. A plate contains sweets and toys, a copy of Shandi and gold coins. Shandi are prayers to Shri Durgama to test the natural inclination of the little man, the baby stretched out its puny arms and took hold of the shandy in one of his tiny hands, 
while with the other it picked up the sweets and gave them away to the ladies standing by. Sarvabhau Ma Sri Rupa Goswami, when they are describing the Maha Mantra of Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu, they are telling clearly that Sri Gauranga is counting. What Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu and the associate did. This verse explained that we must do count. That's why Maha Mantra is called Maha Mantra. Because it's a mantra. Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu to his disciple and his disciple did exactly the same I am telling you. Everywhere is the same information. All the Acharyas, every single time when they are speaking about Mahaprabhu chanting out loud the Maha Mantra, they are always putting one line at least where it reads, he is counting, he's using the Japa. They were all in high glee to see what he did, for they told that the baby be well versed in the sacred lore and charitable in its conduct in adult life. This is feminine logic, one will say, and silly superstition, pure and simple, this divination on such flimsy grounds. But the fact is, they were not very far from the truth, as time will show, and our further study of the newborn baby in its maturity. At time, as time went on, the baby began to crawl on all fours, devouring things and dashing them to pieces. Then it began to prattle and then to toddle, led by the hand, chali, chali, pa, pa, walking, walking, step by step, as the Indian mother would say, chali, chali, pa, pa. Our Raicharan, for such was the name of our hero in his early days, was only five years old when his father died and two years old when the second brother and then after two years again the eldest and the youngest brother departed from the world so that all the love and affection of the of the mother was lavishly bestowed on him and him alone he was now the apple of her eyes the prop and stay for of her life and she would not rest in if Raicharan was away from her for some time, the schoolboy. He was afterwards admit to the Narhail High School. A schoolboy as he was, he had to attend to his family affairs, also for want of a proper guardian to manage them in his behalf. A sharp, shining boy of uncommon good sense and amiable disposition, his sweet simple ways endeared him to all who came in close touch with him. He was rather naughty as promising boys almost invariable are when they are young, but he always topped the list of successful boys in his class. He was a spirited lad, naughty they will say, the green village school matters, schoolmasters of begone days, but he was so kind-hearted that he will run a risk to remove the distress of his fellows and others. His delicate fears for human suffering. Sometimes in the afternoon he will be cle clearing the jungles and picking the thorns from the trodden ways lest they armed those who happened to tread on them, who taught him to entertain these delicate fears for the slightest pain of human being who prompted him to go out of the common way and exert himself to remove the chances and possibilities of human suffering. We leave it to the philosophers to solve this problem of child mentality and pass on some of the remarkable incidents of his period of his life, of this period of his life. On one occasion, he gave away his own umbrella to a boy who had none and chose to suffer from the scorching rays of the summer sun instead. On another occasion he found on his way home a poor man, shivering, shivering with cold in winter. His kind heart melted with pity. He wrapped him with his own shawl, shadar, and came shivering back to home. He was very happy at heart to think that the man was cozy and comfortable in the warm clothing. But he feared his mother 
will take him to task for giving the costly thing away. But his mother was no ordinary mother either. When she heard it all, she approved of his conduct and blessed him heartily for what he has done. It was afternoon. Raisharan was passing the way when he noticed an old man lying on the wayside. The man had fever on his way home from the market and his bundle of foodstuffs were lying at a distance by his side. He could not muster strength to carry his baggage, not even to walk an aid back to his poor lodgings. He was weeping. This was too much for Rai Sharan. He lost no time to put the bundle of his on his own head and lent him a helping hand to see him home. The poor man was overpowered and asked to tell him that he belonged to a servile caste. He was a washerman, and that the respectable gentleman's son should not demand himself, demand himself so much as to carry the burden of a man he was not to touch. But he stopped him, saying, No matter, no question of cost here at present. You are ill, and you need my help, and I must see you home. With these words, he took him safely to his house, returned late in the evening, and related the incident to his mother, who was anxiously and shyly awaiting his arrival. Instances of this kind might be multiplied, for his life was full of them. His life was really a never-ending series of such loving sacrifices for suffering humanity at every stage and period of his life. To be good was easily and natural with him, and he rendered this service to his fellow men without any artificial constraint and without any dist distinction of discrimination. This are pity details it might be urged, but they are all the more important on that account, for they alone can help us to make a true estimate and correct appreciation of a man's worth. The little acts of daily life threw a flood of light on the real character of a man more than the gold deeds done on the grand occasions before the wandering gaze and loud applause of multitude of men. A man is really good if he is good not only in public but also in his private life, not only when he has made a noise in the world in his late, later years, but also when he lived unknown in an obscure village, a mere schoolboy in the early teen of, teens of life. Such was the case with our hero in our schoolboy days, and no wonder he will grow up to be a true spiritualist in his mature years. That's in the chapter one of the life of go life of love called the child. I hope you enjoy this reading and just a small parenthesis. Um, this book was translate translated beautifully by Dr. Kapoor uh, some long time ago in English. So many of the words are old English words and plus that my native language is Spanish. So I want to apologize for any mistake on the translation in the, in the reading, uh, if I have been making any. As always, give like, subscribe to this channel. I read you in the comment section below and see you in the next. Jai Radha Raman Mahavira ki jai Nitai Gaurango ki jai 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 Shri Radhe Shyam. The life of love, Sharit Sudha ki jai.